Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Risley. Risley was rather prepared for this. He had to stay in Muirpide during the last week as he would not want to be giving birth alone and he couldn't leave work for an indefinite amount of time. Or even two weeks felt a little bit too much. Who knows what could happen without him being present. So that's why it felt best to bring you there. And also Sea Dream would be there. And that would guarantee a safe birth. And in case of any complications, her vision would be handy. But he never expected to actually panic that much. He was mostly collected on the outside, able to stay calm and keep calm for you holding your hand and squeezing it. You're doing great, my dear. I believe in you. Come on. You can do it. I can't do shit, Risley. It hurts so much, you have no idea what you're saying. You say, squeezing his hand even more. And he heard the bone cracking. He wasn't sure if he was being hurt right now, because from the look of your eyes, you were hurting much more than him. So could you complain? Absolutely not. And he was terrified. Terrified, I tell you. But, eventually, when it was all over, and he heard the cries of your baby, he felt relieved. You were alive and well. And most importantly, so was your baby too. He kept on cooling you and your face. With his vision. So... It made you feel a lot fresher, and once he held your baby, putting that baby to your chest, he smiled, looking at you too. I feel like I'm blessed, Wyon. I truly am. Maybe. I'm so tired, Risley. But you know what? I'm happy too. You say sweetly. And his heart can't do anything but melt at your words. Your beautiful, comforting words. That he can't trade for anything else in this world. He was relieved to have you. Happy. Because you were his. He had that family that you were able to bring him. You, him, and your child now. And he was certainly going to give you two all the love that he can. For it was the least that you would deserve. And as you kissed your forehead, and you slowly fall asleep, he took your child from your arm, and he held her, smiling, speaking in a soft, low voice. He was anxious about being a father still, no matter what he read and how much he knows. It is still a new territory for him, but he's so excited to venture into it, now with you by his side because he knows that no matter what happens, it will never be truly bad. Not with you out there, willing to do this with him. In fact, it will be the best thing that he's ever had in the entire world, and that is something that he is quite sure of. Lenny. Now, Lenny was beyond anxious. To be honest, if you asked him maybe a year ago if he wanted to be a father, he would have said no. Not because he didn't particularly want to. It simply felt a little bit too much for him. And he was anxious about all of this. He had no idea what to do. How being a father should be like. And even worse. It was... It was too much. And too startling. It felt like a lot of responsibilities that he could not be ready for. But as scared as he was, when it happened, he found himself not wanting to not be a father. Instead, he told you if you wanted it, he would step up to his role to be a good father for all he knows. It's what he needed as a child, a good family. And if he wasn't sure of that, he would have told you he was unable but seeing the light in your eyes, it made him hope as well. 
that he could provide something more than he thinks. And that's why he told himself he could try. He wanted to try this. But seeing you scream in pain as you gave birth to that child? Oh, it was horrifying. He had no idea what to do. He couldn't joke with you right now to lighten the mood because there was no mood to lighten. You were in pain. And he was terrified too, seeing you be like this. He had no idea what to do. And nothing seemed quite right enough, except maybe just shutting up. Which is what he did. And Lynette was there as well, holding his hand and trying to reassure him so he wouldn't panic. He was the type that panicked easily, especially when his loved ones were involved. So that's why she was there. To help him be calmer. And thankfully, when he heard the cries of the baby, he fell down and collapsed, crying in a relief. Lena hugged him gently, looking at you with a smile. I'm glad you're safe, Lyon. I was worried about you. When he got up after that, wrapping his arms around you and kissing you, he wanted to show you his love and his appreciation. Everything that he can, really. He felt so relieved that it was over now. He was scared, terrified for all the things that could have gone wrong. But now, that it's over, and he can see your child for himself, he's so happy. And so relieved that finally, you have him now. And as he held you, he felt excited for your future. And the one thing that Lynette was excited for was being a new aunt. She was definitely looking forward to this. And now that your child's here, she'll make sure she'll be the best aunt ever. And as for Lenny, you had no doubt on what kind of father he would be. Because you knew how caring he was. How good he was with children. Romine was not there because you felt too queasy about this. But you were sure that you were going to get a lot of visits. Especially from a certain lady. That was a bit unsettling. But she was actually very happy for your child. And for Lenny as well. Arlequina did not see herself becoming a grandfather so soon. But... Children grow up very fast, and she's more than happy to see her own grow, and she's quite interested how Lenny will do with his own.